on a baseline with that tremendous driving ability. And then there's Stefan Marbury. He's the 3D man. Look at him drive, draw, and dish the rock. And then he shows his ability to get to the goal. Super strong. I'll tell you one thing. Both guys can put on some big numbers early in the season, and they're going to put bigger numbers as the year progresses. But they have a little help as well. Bobby Crimmins and John Thompson want to make that perfectly. A lot of wins in his career since taking over that program when it was really at the depths of despair. You talk about graduating players. Guys stayed here four years. 72 of 74 have graduated. Georgia Tech in gold. Georgetown in gray. Off the tap, Jerome Williams. He goes on the wing for Victor Page. Dick, the pace of this game should be fascinating. Yeah, it really should be. And a lot will be dictated by who gets the early lead. Iverson for Harrington. Point guard works it around. Penetration and the basket for Jerome Williams. Jerome Williams is one of your unsung heroes. I like to talk about guys that don't get a lot of recognition, and he is a key part of this basketball team. He is not a third or fourth option. That heartbreak for Stephon Marbury. Works down with a tenacious defensive team this year because they possess that one quality quickness. That's Barry for Maddox. And Michael Maddox, the sophomore out of Atlanta, has the equalizer. That's a big play right there. He has to give him some presence down at a low post. Last year, he was a drifter. He was a perimeter player, Maddox. But a the turnover as he went racing down to the baseline. By the way, the hardest working guys tonight might be the ACC officiating crew. Ted Valentine, Bob Donato, Frank Scagliata trying to keep up with this one tonight. The one thing right there with Bubakar Al, the game plan for Georgia Tech is to play off and to try and give help on the inside. What is the turnover? Marbury lost it. Iverson has it, and he scores over Barry. I'll tell you, what explosiveness. I watched that step to the basket. He's got that great acceleration, Allen Iverson. Led at Bethel High School his junior year. Led him to the state championship in football and basketball. Was a great rollout quarterback. Boy is by two. Oh, nice look. That was Barry down to Maddox. Loose ball. Marbury had a shot, and he threw it into traffic. Yeah, he tried to make the spectacular pass. One thing that's impressed me about Stephon Marbury doing his first two games, he has played under control. There's the rotation defensively on Maddox. Williams comes rotating over. He is such a solid player, both defensively and as a rebounder. There is Victor Page, the freshman out of McKinley Tech in D.C. Averaged about 33 points a game when he played in high school two years ago. Was player of the year in Washington, D.C. He adds a special dimension to this team. He gives Iverson another guy that can finalize. Marbury, and he dumps it over the baseline, but it was touched by a Hoya on the way. And Big John standing up on that sideline. I was teasing John. I said, Marbury told me he wanted to go to Georgetown. You didn't call him up. He said, why did he call me up? <laughs> hey, you got to call up Georgetown to get in. They had almost 13,000 applicants for the class of 98 this year. Oh, nice look by Barry. There he is breaking the defense down, and Maddox shows his inside-outside ability. Don't underestimate the passing ability of Barry. Michael Maddox with five. Drew Barry, over 500 assists in his career. That's Iverson handling the ball. I think one of the real requisites against Georgetown, you must force them to play a five-on-five -five game. You cannot allow them score off their defense into offense in terms of transition or all blitz it like they did in their first two games. You have to be able to control the basketball and make them play five against five. Foul was on Eddie Elisma. Hartbury had a touch on the rebound. And it'll go back. See shot selection. That was an area that Iverson had to work on from last year. I thought that last year he should have pulled up and utilized the medium range jumper as opposed to thinking so much of the three point long range jumper. Two minutes and 45 seconds in. Georgetown leads six to five. Maddox has had a hot hand. They go to him again. And he almost went three for three. Very Bella Harrington, the rebound. He's very active on the inside. Here comes Victor Page. He is so fast. Two Hoyas foul. Bumped out of there. Williams in the corner for Iverson. 
Rebound Marbury, and Page fouled him in the air. Shooting the ball a little too quickly right now, Georgetown, in their half-court game. They got to get a few feels on the inside, the old fella, Harrington, who had a big game in their first game. By the way, Harrington and also Iverson played together on the World Universities games team, got to know each other even a little bit better, and it really helped both guys because last year, especially early, they were a little bit out of sync with each other. Barbary played with Jahidi White of Georgetown at the World Junior Championships in Greece for under-19s. Five Georgetown players involved in international play in the last year. And that certainly is going to help your game, going to give you a little maturity. Here's Barry kicking it for Maddox, and we had a foul in the paint. It appears to be on Jerome Williams. Santa Clara with a one-point advantage in Maui over Michigan State at the half. They've been a big story in that tournament, knocking off UCLA earlier. To show you what Iverson did this summer, he led the team in scoring, steals, and assists. And that included a team with Terry Kittles, Ray Allen, and Tim Duncan. Very dishes, lots of traffic. Somehow Hartbring caught it, couldn't make the shot, but he was fouled. Harpering's one of the great stories in basketball. Was not heavily recruited, was not a blue-chip superstar coming out of high school, yet he stepped into the Georgia Tech lineup last year and became such a solid player. And this year, he's even elevated his game more. He's put on some weight. He's a lot stronger. Marbury had 16 points and five assists when Georgia Tech beat Manhattan. That was their first-round game in the NIT, a 20-point verdict. And Matt Harpering really came up big with a double-double. And then at home, they defeated the Sooners despite 20 26 points and 11 rebounds by Ryan Miner. Hey, I'll tell you, they beat a good Oklahoma team and a very good Manhattan basketball team. And I really believe that this Georgia Tech team, no matter what happens here today, is going to be a better basketball team than last year. They seem to enjoy playing with each other a lot more. Even though they lost 40 points between Best and Forest, I believe they'll be a better team. Here goes to a half-court trap. Georgia Tech by one. That's a win, G, losing it. Here's Harpering on the transition. Matt Harbury walked the pass for Marbury, but created by the steal. Bobby Krebs does a little dance on the sideline. Marbury's an excellent defensive player, especially on the basketball. Georgia Tech on a 7-0 run to take a 9-6 lead. Here's Page with the left-hander. Elisma over the top. They're going to call... Maddox over the top trying to crash the glass. I like Frank Scagliata. He says, yes, you. And he says it with authority and with conviction. Michael Maddox with a vow. Georgia Tech hanging with the pace of the Hoyas so far. We are off to the races at the Garden. But let them get a little timing. They'll play together. And you'll see John Cheney's team get better and better as the season progresses. That's Joseph Tuomu who just checked in, a freshman out of Williams to North Carolina, and he knocks down the three right off the bench. He's from Cameroon. There is Tuomo. Great shooting, something Georgetown has not had much of in recent years. He gives him some quickness. He has a little bump right there on Stephon Marbury, who tries to attack the defense by beating Tuomo. Joseph Tuomo. Did not play his senior year in high school because of a knee problem. Playing at the highest level now with Georgetown. There's Iverson watching as Marbury. Georgetown, up top. Georgetown comes out of the man-to-man, -man, goes to a 2-3 zone. Should have some wing jump shots there. Just swing the ball. Marbury quick. Oh, what a nice look. Piper. Elisma falling away at it. Damon Jackson came up with a loose ball for Georgetown. Marbury with the great eyes. Did an excellent job defensively to stop the ball from running up the floor. And that's the one thing you want to do in defensive transition. Stop the basketball. Godwin Owinji on the left wing for Jerome Williams. Left baseline. Running out of room is Damon Jackson. Managed to get the whistle. Jackson, a slasher, quick player. They got some diaper dandies that are going to step in and help right away when you talk Page, Jackson, and Tuomo. Big Heidi White, 6'9", 270, out of Cardinal Ritter in St. Louis, a sophomore. John Thompson told me on the phone, he said, you know, 
I really treated him. It was a sweetheart season last year for Jahidi. This year, he's going to see the real tiger in me as I come at him. We need his presence inside to go to that next level to be way up on top with the big guys. Yeah, but he put it on the floor and coughed it up. He played only eight minutes a game last year. Came out of a great high school program. In fact, his high school program, Lauren Woods, a 7-1 player, signed with Wake Forest, and Chris Carrowell, a 6-6, from the same high school in St. Louis. Cardinal Ritter signed as well with uh, Duke. Age for Iverson, who checks back in, matched up with Marbury. See Marbury, a good defensive player. They're going to set a screen and try to get Iverson free. Releases it for Owinji. That was Jahidi White with a touch, but he couldn't corral it. Owinji had the wide open jump at the elbow. And a little two man play. There's a look at Jahidi, big, strong player. There's a score from our first game tonight. Arizona's in the championship game. Great catch by Hartford. Owinji tried to stay with him, and Godwin will get his first foul. Harper showed some of his football abilities. He was a star at Maris High School on a football field as well. Well, how about his dad? Played middle linebacker for Bo at Michigan. His uncle Jack played at Navy. His granddad played at Navy. A couple of brothers playing Division I football. He should know how to catch those long There's passes. the big catch. There's the hands. And now he tries to seal off the defense and draws the contact. Got a brother playing at Northwestern. Yeah, brother that at is Akron. Brian, and John plays at Akron for Jerry Faust. No, oh, Jerry Faust's not there anymore. Oh, well, used to be. Yeah, he, I guess he was rude to Yep. He's hard with that good touch. I really like the Georgia Tech team much better than last year because they get more ball movement. Hey, Dick, I got to ask you, with Harrington coming in, where has he been offensively? They haven't thrown in the ball. Yeah, he's got to get some touches inside. They got to take advantage of his offensive ability and get him involved, especially if Georgia Tech stops the running game. Page straight ahead. Jahidi White. There he is. They need that out of him. Jahidi White has got good post presence inside, and they got to get him involved offensively as well. He did not score a point against Temple. Barbary, little bounce pass for Maddox. Got the foul, couldn't knock it down. Barbary really making some good looks. They haven't been able to convert, but he's also got to be able to look and think a little bit about a shot. Look at Barry got hurt. Barry hurt his ankle. Barry's hopping off the court. This can be big. They can't afford to lose Drew Barry. His leadership ability, his talent as well, his experience. This is his team, says Bobby Cremins, and his top assistant, Kevin Cantwell, who also hails from New York City. A painful expression on the face of Drew Barry, the senior. His teammate at the other end, Michael Maddox at the line. Georgia Tech only plays about seven guys. Juan Gaston, a freshman out of Decatur, Georgia, has checked in. He's really been impressive in the first two games. He was a tremendous football player. Ran a 4-4-40. In fact, Georgia Leary told me I'd love to have him on a football team at Georgia Tech. Let's take a look. They're working on that ankle. Already had it taped. Maddox fails to hit either. Gaston had the rebound. There's no foul, but because of his hustle, Georgia Tech will get it back. And with Barry on the sideline now with that injury, it puts even more pressure now on the diaper dandy Marbury to really have to step up and have a solid game. Doesn't have somebody to bail him out. Georgetown's Iverson tough on the inbounds play. He Drew like Barry's expression looks rather serious. What a basketball family, brother, playing now with the Clippers. Brent and John playing with the Golden State Warriors and Scooter playing overseas. Page intercepts. He'll go along. Oh, yes, what great hop. He's got the tremendous hop. He's like McKinley Mountain. He played at McKinley Tech. He gets way, way up on that mountaintop. Boy, is as they always do, turn defense into offense and lead by three. We are six and a half minutes in. Look at Iverson. He was the player of the year, as you said, defensively in the Big East last year. Not a bad title for a kid that was a freshman. That is unbelievable in a league like that. And didn't play basketball the year before. Maddox up by. Goes by Jahidi White, who swats away at him. Then he outlets over the head of Iverson. In the backcourt, Marbury will intercept. You know, Iverson really has been exonerated from all those problems. It's finally been all clean. He's got a clean record. As we all know, that was documented. He went to prison there for a time. Georgetown. Page with the deflection, but it went right back 
to Gary Saunders, who checked in for Georgia Tech. He's their seventh man. He's from out of New York City as well. He's a slasher. Out of Brother Rice High School. Hey, he went to Rice High School, play with Felipe Lopez at Rice, the St. John's phenom. So he's used to being in the background with Marbury getting all the attention at the moment. Lots of fouls in this game. 17 fouls now against the Hoyas. So the Yellow Jackets go into the bonus, and Barry is going back for treatment or worse. There's Page right there. Looks like he catches an elbow. They get him for contact. Gary Saunders, a bit of a jumper from the line. He couldn't get it to go. Here comes Iverson. Look at that speed from one end of the floor to the other. Oh, great move. He just goes the length of the court, coast to coast, explodes to the basket. His quickness is reminiscent to me. Back in 1976, a guard from Chicago playing from Michigan by the name of Ricky Green. Rebound Harrington. Now you've got to get Harrington involved a little bit. He rebounds here. Now you've got to give him a touch. As a little guard, you've got to say, I've got to take care of the big fellow. I've got to keep him happy. There's a steal. Marbury takes it away. Marbury strips him. They don't have numbers. Two on three. But he did draw the foul. He had Harrington and Bubakar Owl chasing it. Marbury has scoring ability, and he's going to have to step up and think a little bit more of score right now with Barry out of the lineup. Oh, Barry's getting ready to come in. How about that? From the locker room to the court in record time, he comes limping back in. Drew Barry not on the board yet, but he's on the court, and that's what's important for Bobby Kremitz. He was second in the ACC in terms of guards as a rebounder. He's a complete player. Marbury at the line, following in a great tradition of Georgia Tech point guards. Travis Best most recently, Kenny Anderson before Mark that, Price. all the way back to Mark Price. Point Guard University, I guess you can label the rambling wreck of Georgia Tech. PGU. Tech. After missing five free throws in a row, finally Marbury gets one to drop. See, Tuomo now handling the basketball frees Iverson to be like a second guard. He's one of those combo guards. They got him now to where he doesn't have the pressure of handling the basketball and bringing it up the court. That's why Barry is limping all over the place, really favoring that ankle. Baseline underneath Jerome Williams. No one rotates over. He's one of my favorite players. He doesn't get a lot of ink, doesn't get a lot of PR. See, Barry is slow getting to the basketball, really favoring that ankle. If I'm Tech, i got to have Barry throwing it in, not trying to catch it. Hoyas by six. All the vendors, and nobody stopped the basketball. Georgetown scrapping into a 2-2-1 press. Through the diagonal pass right over the trap. That was Barry for Hartford. And he goes down and steps on the baseline. The Hoyas will have it back. Five turnovers now. That's 47 turnovers in two-plus games forced by the Georgetown defense. Well, Georgetown defensively is going to create havoc on a lot of clubs this year. This club really has great potential defensively. Hard work by Juan Gaston there, but Iverson got it back. Jahidi White. Ow! And Georgetown lucky to get it back momentarily. And it's my guy, Jerome Williams. I mean, he's hustling. He wants to sell popcorn. He wants to do it all. He's got that Washington look with the high socks. Jerome, a real Windex man, a glass eater. There he is. Look at this hustle. Look at that leap. I mean, he's ready for the long jump. He says, bring up Michael Powell. Bring up Powell. He had the Georgia Tech managers just about dying down there at the end of the bench. Checks out. Yaya Cha has checked in for Georgetown. A junior out of Oh, what a nice look right there. Give the assist created by Mr. Marbury. Great eyes. Great feel. He anticipates well. Maddox the finish, and he has seven. Iverson, short with the long one. There's Ya, and he gets it out on top to Tuomo. Ya's a leader, he's a complimentary player. And a three for Jerome Williams, seven for your favorite Hoyer. Well, I'll tell you one thing, when he starts knocking down threes, you can have a long night if you're Georgia Tech. He's not a long-range shooter. Georgetown by seven. Marbury distributes and gets it back from Gaston. Now they switch it for Barry about the behind-the-back pass. Oh. And Strong on 
on the rebound and the break. Williams, Iverson, and an offensive foul. Barry did a great job stepping in on Iverson. Won him up of the year. Barry hurt that ankle, but does the little things to help a club. Here he is right now. Shows his experience. He anticipates Iverson. Iverson leaves his feet. He's right there on the field. Great job by Barry to take that charge. And remember, Georgia Tech only plays seven people. That lack of depth against a team like Georgetown that goes nine or ten deep and plays that pace could be telling in the second half. They have never been a club under Bobby Previns to utilize a bench. Right now, here's the zone. You've got to get into the seams and gaps of the zone. Barry for Gaston. And that's a big three for him coming off the bench. I'll tell you, he's been a positive player. He's got great athletic ability as well as excellent touch. Iverson. Too much traffic. A little bit out of control against the five-man defense. Barbary. Oh, look at him. What a great challenge. Oh, hello, New York. I'm home, baby. New York, New York. I'm home in a big city. A little 20-second timeout by John Thompson. Doesn't want this place to start rocking. Doesn't want it to become the Stefan show. He's magical. He's magnificent. He's marvelous. Oh, Digger, you got to like this guy, Digger. Look at that change of direction. Mike T jumps out of his seat. He says, yes. Look at the strength. Look at the upper body strength for the little guy. And here's the conversion. Looks of new players. Owingi out of junior college is going to be a good player, a rebounder, a defensive player. Oh, oh. That was Victor Page on the drive, and the Hoyas will have it back. Victor Page is a prolific scorer. He really has a nose for the basket, knows how to score. You don't score 33 points a game in Washington, D.C. and not be able to score. Williams. Marbury got in front of him, and Jerome Williams commits his first foul. I love to have Marbury at the line. Got to get a little bit more knee flexion on that free throw. Tech is only four out of ten from the line so far. And yeah, that hurts you when you're looking at a two-point game and you're shooting 40% on the line. That's trouble city. Stefan Marbury with four. It's back to a one-point game with 9-10 before halftime. Iverson with a big step. Oh, what a great step to the basket. Owen cuts off his driving angle. You want to just put it down and get back on defense, Mr. Maddox. Don't need any show. Don't need any fouls. Don't need any unsportsmanlike conduct. I'm going to hit him with a tee. He was pumped after that one. Here's Iverson from Williams. Oh, nice look. Next line, Owinji. Owinji gets the deuce, but Allen Iverson created the opportunity. We are watching some athletes on this floor right now. Very short. Ball climbs out of bounds. It'll be interesting with Barry's shot to see how much jumping he can get off the floor with that ankle for his jumper. Yeah, he's really favoring that ankle. Bobby's going to have to go in and out with him, get him off the court a little bit, get him back on. Only thing is, you don't want that thing to tighten up by sitting on that sideline a long time. I'm not a doctor and an expert in those areas at all. I've had a tough enough time trying to analyze a basketball game. A lot to analyze in this one. Boy is by three, 8.20 before halftime. That's a whingy on the wing. Finally, Harrington has the ball. Dishes off for Page. Well off. Two hangers with it. Cochrane took it away from a whingy. Barry has to wait, and he cannot score. See, there's an example where the Yankee really hurt him in that sequence. He just didn't have the confidence to go on strong. He didn't have the confidence to run after the basketball like he normally does. Owingi out of control. No call. It'll go back to Georgia Tech. See, I think you hurt your club more than you help your club. Classic. See Kansas against Utah. Roy Williams has got a dynamite team. Also, we'll see Memphis and Purdue. Purdue going for a third straight Big Ten title. Heartbreak trapped in the corner. Double dribble. That was great defensive pressure right there by Georgetown. Really rotating. I mean, John's got something special. The last great team they had is 89. That's the year John Thompson's club lost that unbelievable heartbreaker to Duke for the final game to go to the final four. There's the trap. That's a no man's land. Once you get into that area there, you're in major trouble. But in 12 and a half minutes, Tech has only turned it over six times. Oh, what a nice look. Marbury. Look at that pass. Marbury to Harper. I mean, this is an excellent look. I mean, we're watching a 
and night for Dandy. A kid that's played three college games. Look at Iverson answer. He that's says, eight for him. He says, Marbury, anything you can do, I can do better. He's got eight. Marbury has six. They each have a couple of assists and a couple of turnovers. And they're both great players, both great talents. You talk about point guards. I think number one today, if I'm coaching in college, I want to get me a great point guard. Are shaking their head, a little shake and bake, New York City style. Oh, guest in the finish, it was goaltending. That's why we heard a whistle and there were no free throws. But the ball then went in anyway. Some guys are born with a rock in their hands, and Marbury is one of them. He is a legitimate creator and innovator and a solid point guard. And I just love him as a personality. I really do. I got a great story to tell you about in the elevator with him today. and then I hit the baseline from the hands of a Wingy. I was telling you the story. I'm in the elevator, and here I am is looking at Bobby Kremens. And in the elevator is Matt Harpering, and there's Stefan Marbury and a few other players. And he said to me, he said, Coach, I'm taking all my boys to the hood. I'm taking them down to the hood. And when I walked off, it was so beautiful to see. Here's this African-American kid from the streets of New York talking to a teammate, Matt Harpering, who's from suburban, uh, out in Marietta, Georgia. And you could just see the love they had for one another because of the jersey they represent. Who talks about racial problems right there. You talk about people playing for the purpose of playing for the school they represent. Well said, Dick, and the round ball brings them together. It's the uniform that does it, as does the gray of Georgetown. Barry is back. Marbury will take a seat. Barry, nice look. Saunders in the key. Maddox lost it as the Hoyas swarm once more. 6-19 before halftime. It's Georgetown leading 26-25. Iverson right now, look at him back in. Saunders right up in the foul line area. Couldn't climb that one over the iron. Hoyas will keep it. Thinking that through Bobby Winston. Othella Harrington short. Page on the back door. Just the score. Always going to come up with the deuce somehow, whether it be a transition, open jump shot, offensive rebound. At the end of the night, he'll have big numbers. Hoyas press always because of their depth. They love the pace. But Barry takes care of it against Tuomu in the backcourt. Tuomu really works on a defensive end. He's a DBT man. Drive, beat, and turn. Saunders has a three. Iverson left his man to try to get a steal, and Saunders was open. Gary Saunders is a player that Howard Garfinkel, who stopped by a little bit earlier, five-star fame, really is very high on. Said he had him at the camp. He's just a solid all-around player. Take the lead. King Victor doesn't waste any time coming back with three. And then he's put some defensive pressure right on Barry. Barry says, I got a bad ankle. Take it easy on me. Maddox. Oh, he can do it inside. And he's got the three. And Michael Maddox has 12 already. He's always been able to do it from the perimeter. He's added the interior to his game. He deflected the passive page intended for Harrington. Othello will go down low and post up again. Well, at least on the inside. They were really concerned about trying to handle Othello, but they're going to get a little help because they're not getting the ball inside to Othello. What? And the threes are being traded now like commodities stuck on Wall Street. I'll tell you what, One after the other. A lot of the Wall Street execs stopped in here after doing all their work down here on the Wall Street. There are a lot of suits watching this game at the Garden tonight. Iverson has 11, by the way. Harper through traffic. Tough rebound, Jerome Williams. And he does a great job of dribbling the ball out after rebounding. Good handle, and he lays the screen out there for Iverson. He got his man skying. That was Tuomo. Had a Lisma off the floor. That three a little bit short. Good box out by Matt Harper. Here's Barry. He's got Maddox. He already has six assists. Cannot score. That's Maddox with the putback. I'll tell you, Mike Maddox is growing up. He is becoming a much more complete player. He's taking his game and elevating. He's stepping it up. He's getting better and better with each performance. He has more tonight than he had in all of his first two games. <laughs> Harrington. He said, hey, no one's going to get me to run. I'm just going to go up and get it. From out of Mississippi, Lidamura High School in Jackson. 
Outstanding high school program. He's actually down 15 pounds from last year. Othella checked in at a svelte 235 for John Thompson for job. his senior year. Did a great job against Donald Foyle, the great player from Matakogi. Head up to a deuce with a little help from his friends. Yellow Jackets down by three, 310 before halftime. Fairness to Donald, he didn't have the helping pass that Mr. Harrison has. Shot clock at two. Alizma throws it away. Four assists for Stefan, the freshman. Iverson, the defensive player of the year in the Big East last year with a couple of takeaways, although Stefan has matched him in that department. They've both given us, Dick, flashes of brilliance in this first 17 minutes. Well, Iverson's an outstanding lead guard. He's got that great scoring ability. And also, Marbury can score, but he's thinking pass a little bit more, where Allen is thinking a little bit more shot. Victor Page took some contact from Gary Saunders. You know, last time these two teams, I mean, we're talking some big time players in that era. You don't think of these two teams together, these two schools. This is a series that goes back to 1921. Little Rico and Digger are in the studio, and they've got the Delta Fawcett halftime report coming up. And how about UCLA? What a story that is. Yeah, one or two out of the game. I think, you know, when you look right now, they're going to just certainly have to regroup mentally, but don't forget the fact they got to regroup as a team as well. They lost three players who had a total of 45 points and 17 rebounds and a lot of experience in Edney, O'Bannon, and certainly Z. Boy is by five, two and a half to go. Drew Berry has not scored. He's yeah. playing hurt. He really is playing hurt. He's not playing. He can barely now look to back in defensive transition. Look at a high rise, the Skywalker, the little guy, Alan Iverson. What a team they had that won the gold medal in Japan with Kittles and Allen and Tim Duncan and Lorenzen Wright. I can't wait to see Wright this week. Ray Allen told me, he said, he's probably the best big man I've played with. He said, I love Lorenzen Wright. Iverson has 13 now. Barbary, nobody open, took the three and missed. And Victor Page will run with it. Barbary snuffs it out and gets the INT. Now he's got to create the opportunity by attacking. He right yeah. past Iverson. I'll go right to the basket. Very strong upper body. I tell you, they have not disappointed anyone, Barbary and Iverson. There's Perry with the steal. Get it to Barber. Three on Barber. two. He does. Get it to Barber. Oh, he does not finalize. Ah! Got the foul, though. And he was playing, really, with one leg. And you're not going to help the team, help yourself. Seven in the first half for Stefan Marbury. Bloody effort by Barry. I wouldn't expect anything else being a Barry. I mean, you talk about a family that prides itself. And hey, the mom, let me tell you, we always talk about the dad, but the mom, she came from a great basketball background. Her dad was an outstanding coach. Coach Hale, coach at the University of Miami, coach to the ABA. Yellow Jackets hanging around. Boy is by three. Left baseline, it won't go for Victor Page. Harpering tried to go off to the races, but he forgot the rock. And here's Iverson. And they didn't forget the rock, they know where to get it. You know, Harris is not scoring, but he's got seven rebounds. So he's keeping it very active in other ways. Look at the hustle of Page. Now they contest every pass. They really come off the deny, overplay. Iverson. They got it off the inbounds play. Page is taking a seat. I spread the floor a little bit here in the last minute. I like Tuomo. I really believe he's going to help this club as a third guard coming off the bench. He and Jackson didn't play their senior year because of a knee injury. Marbury gets his second foul as he grabbed Allen Iverson, who has scored 15 points in the first half. You know, a lot of people talking about it in all the articles. Will Marbury leave? What about Iverson leaving? No Georgetown player under John Thompson has left early, and he never sits down and talks to them about it. He told me, I never talked, as he watched the move by Williams on the interior, he said, I never talked to Alonzo Mourning and Ewing about possibly leaving early or Matumbo. He said, heck, my all unsung hero team from Purdue, Mark Hendrickson from Washington State, he would fit that category as well. Rashad Allen from down at Tulane is another guy I would throw up 
on that club. I throw on the road shuffler as well, out of Connecticut. Victor Page back in. Rebound and a strong one by Jerome Williams. Every rebound he goes after is. Uh -oh. Uh oh, how can you lose Jahani? I don't know. How could you forget? How could you not find that big white body? 6'9, 270. Somebody had to see him. See, that's a breakdown. Young players, and that's maybe right there the loss of a Barry. You would take charge in that situation, so you got to be aware, you got to be the team leader. You got to step up with your Marbury and say, hey, we got a guy behind us. Hoyas by eight. Out on top, Marbury in traffic. And a turnover. Georgetown has a chance for a double digit lead. You talk about tenacious and really tenacity. Georgetown just doesn't relent. They're relentless. They just keep coming after you, after you, and after you. Iverson has to gun it up. at the half. Just solid defense by George Dan, and really the presence and the scoring of Allen Iverson was so explosive. Well, Mike Tirico, Arizona earlier in the nightcap, Georgetown has turned on the pressure cooker here in New York. Yeah, Bob, well played in your mind. I'll tell you, Arizona's experience versus Michigan's youth. Great game, but a little different ending. Michigan's youth showing itself in terms of athleticism here. They were down early, but Maceo Bastin, one block. Then he'll reject Miles Simon. Travis Conlon starts the break. Bastin did the defensive work, the offensive payback for Steve Fisher's team. Eight freshmen and sophomores on this team, and Lewis Bullock, one of the youngsters. The steal and the donkey at 22. Michigan down most of the way within three, 71-68. But the Wildcats start to pull away. Albert White misses the three. Then Miles Simon to Dickerson for the jam. Zona by eight, but Michigan scored the next six. They were close. Then what happened, Digger? Watch the experience factor. Ben Davis, they go to him inside. He reads the defense, feeds it to Dickerson, who sees Joseph Blair underneath for the slam dunk. And that's why experience is important. Michigan came out with a double when they were doing a good job in half-court defense, and Arizona comes away with a seven-point win. The team that won the 1990 preseason NIT moves on to the finals. Now some other tournaments going on on ESPN. Down with the big edge. Hey, Dick, I just asked Drew Barry how he feels. He shook his head no. He said, I just can't get loose. It's really bothered me. But he's starting and still playing hurt for Georgia Tech. Yeah, he's lame right now. He's limping. There's no question. Barberry running the offense. Maybe Barry can make a shot or two outside. Oh, Dad would be proud of that one. Well, he was able to square his body, get the good look. But look at him limping right now. I mean, he is really favoring his ankle. He did have six assists in the first half. There's the putback, and guess who? Iverson. Iverson with the tip on the inside. That's got to be a nightmare if you're Bobby Crevins and a little guy can step in and make that tip. Oh, there's the foul. No contact. They said no contact. Barbary can't believe it. Come on, give me a break. And then uh, Jerome Williams walking with the ball after they came up with it. You know, both teams shot pretty well. Georgia Tech 13 of 25 in the first half, 52%. But that was 12 less attempts than Georgetown had. They were 20 of 37, 54%. Well, you talk about rebounding. It starts with Jerome Williams. I grabbed the flying columnist and watched the post by Wolpon. I said, get the kids some ink. He deserves zing. Here's Page. Here's Iverson. Uh, very Here's Page. Little two-man game. Iverson says, I got to take care of Victor because he'll take care of me. Largest lead now, nine points, just over a minute into the second half. Georgetown really hurts you big time with the steal. Well, the missed shot and the steal, they just are so explosive from the defensive end to the offensive end. Barry finds Marbury circling around. Rebound Maddox. It won't go for him after the big first half he had. Harrington knocks down Hartbring and play continues. And Dulles done an excellent job rebounding here tonight. A running rebound for Eddie Elisma. His first rebound of the night. He has not scored a point. Yeah, he's not really an offensive player, but he needs some defensive presence from him and also some rebounding. Oh! Very short. Got his own. He'll try again. And he's got five. See, we start scoring some points. That ankle starts to get a little better. <laughs> 
adrenaline starts flowing. It's yeah. like playing on a play pavement. You don't want to leave. You play winners, you want to stay out there. There's Chop. Nice duck down. Second field goal tonight. Back tonight it goes for the Hoyas. Barberry trying to make too much happen, and Iverson stuffed him. Yeah, he lost the jump ball, lost in a possession. They will get it back, but that play will do a little psychological damage, maybe. No, it goes over to Georgetown to basketball. Okay, they had the arrow going the other way. Now they fixed it, and deservedly so. I'd like to say I said this last year. That was a great defensive play. Iverson head to head with all the experiences. Come on, Mr. Marbury. This is not high school. This is the big leagues now. And I got a year's experience. I'm going to show you why I was player of the year defensively in the Big East. Iverson, jackets chasing him everywhere. And finally a foul. He's starting to dominate. He really is starting to dominate the game. That will be number three on Bobby Kremens Jr. Eddie Olizma, and again we update the backcourt matchup. Well, you see the 16 points, three assists, two steals. Iverson's an outstanding player on the defensive end, as we documented with his award, the Player of the Year defensively in the Big East. I mean, that's an amazing accomplishment for a freshman. Stefan, looking at the scores, I don't like that. This is my home territory. I'm home here. Hey, when's the last time he ever looked at a scoreboard in New York City and saw his team behind? I know. <laughs> He's played here three times. Played here in high school twice. Iverson with 19. Sensational. Here comes George Down with Williams at the point of the press. Using those long arms, bobbing the passing lane. Heartbreak for Maddox. Bounce pass through. And as Elisma made his move for the basket, the ball was behind him. You see, the one thing Georgetown does, they keep coming after you with pressure. You beat the first wave. Look, Bobby Krebs says, hey, what's happening, guys? Come on, settle down. This is New York. I'm from New York. Got my family here. There's Page from Iverson. Victor has 15. And he scored a lot. The two of them are going to put a lot of points on the board. Iverson and Page. Looks like he's moving okay now. Out the way! Nice change of direction. Seven for Drew all since halftime in three minutes and ten seconds. I would imagine it's hurting when he's coming down on that ankle. After going up and scoring. Iverson against Barry. He wants to strip a Barry playing off, so I'll let you shoot the long-range jumper. Nice switch off on the baseline. Ball taken away from Williams. because of Page's pressure. See, what I would do right now with Marbury, he's really struggling. I would take him out for about 30 seconds, sit him down, and bring him right back on the floor. You mentioned earlier, it's been a tough time for Bobby Kremens and Georgia Tech. Last two years, no postseason. The year before those two, he beats uh, wins the beats North Carolina, wins the ACC tournament, gets beat in the first round by Southern. Last year, beaten in the first round of the ACC by Virginia. They voted no when the NIT asked them to come to New York for the postseason. I just thought that was an emotional decision. It was so down as Odella started to get involved offensively. Georgetown really getting now some inside as well as perimeter scoring. Boy is by 13. They seem to reach a new biggest lead every time down the floor. Drew Barry wants a foul call. Frank Scagliata didn't give it to him. The Hoyas giving him plenty of heat, and it's a 13-point Georgetown lead. Seven average. LaFrance, they tell me he's a lot stronger. Pollard, very active. Paul Pearson, Diaper Dandy, Calvin Rayford Pearson. I mean, Roy Williams has got himself a dandy team. That'll be Rock Chalk, Jay Hawkins uh, down there. Nothing like that chance to get you ready for hoops in Allen Fieldhouse. Although Dick will be in Kansas City. Maddox bounces it right to Victor Page. And look at him explode out of the gate. A little too explosive. Nothing but jackets down the floor. Easy for Harper. Harper's had a ton of time getting some good looks at the basket. At 39 points in two games coming into this game. Georgetown gets it right back. No call. Oh, my goodness. Way up there. Bubakar Owl. Bubakar Owl is one of those complimentary players. A guy that runs, jumps, plays on the 
defensive end. Maddox for Barry. Maddox. That's a two. He had his toe on the line. Yeah, so you've got to be aware of that line. If you're that close, you've got to back it up. You've got to back it up an inch or two. You play for Kentucky now, he takes you out of the lineup. He says, sit down next to me, Petito. If you're that close, you've got to be aware. You've got to be alert. And those Wildcats will be on ESPN. Bobby Kremitz, one of the best liked, most liked people. I'll tell you something. He's just got a great personality. The kids love him. There's a foul away from the ball. It looked like Jerome Williams did a little grabbing. That'll be his second. 18 NCAAs, five Big East titles, regular season, six Big East tournament titles, graduating his players, get him ready for the Hall of Fame. I mean, if yep. Dean and Bobby and those guys are in, John's ready for it. Oh, Drew Perry is back. He has nine points all since halftime in five and a half minutes. What pressure Iverson puts on a defense the way he runs the ball up the court. Perry catches it and runs with it, and he thought he saw Victor Page out of the corner of his eye. He just took a straight line up the floor, and Page made the contact for his... He recruited a kid by the name of Machado. Pablo Machado, a kid from out of Venezuela. Marbury from Barry. He'll flash. He will just hit it a little too long. But oh, that was a super move. High percentage shot, split the defense. That was Othello, Othello Harrington's ninth rebound of the night. Uncontested underneath. And easy two for Owingi. I'll tell you one thing. Georgetown has that typical offensive rebounding team. All of the days at Georgetown in the 80s and also Louisville for years used to live off the offensive rebound. Bobby Kremens wants a timeout. 13.38 remaining. He's doing everything he can to keep his team in this. Well, Digger coached a lot of years in the Hoosier State. He knows all about those boilers. I'll tell you one thing. He never reaches in his pockets and pays for anything. There's a little kickoff down here. I went to dinner with him. I don't know how many times in South Bend over the last month and a half. Got his favorite place, Parisi's, and he never reaches down in his pockets. Oh, wait, I got to get back to the game. I can't talk about that. He can't stray. Third foul for Jerome Williams. At the line, Juan Gaston, the freshman out of Decatur, Georgia. Georgetown has checked Jahidi White back in. Number 55, right bottom corner of your screen. Nice touch there, and Juan has six. Georgia Tech is one close player away from really being a top 10 basketball team. And tonight it has really shown because they haven't been able to do the job on the boards, neutralizing the offensive rebounding power of Georgia, Georgetown. Nice high off the glass. That's 17 for Victor Page. I like Victor Page's. He's got that old-fashioned one hand running with the knee up in the air off the glass. Barbary fights off to Omu. Here's Barry. Back to the freshman. Well off with the three. And rebounded physically by Godwin Owingi. Here in the Big East, you talk about excitement with Kittles and Allen and Iverson and Page. John Wallace, stars galore. There's a little acrobatic. And Teddy Valentine with the call on the block. Valentine does an outstanding job. You know, Dick, you talked about that rebounding. Georgetown, 23, 10 and a half. 11 of those 23 were on the offensive end. Yeah, they out-rebounded George. Georgia Tech in terms of their more offensive rebounds than they have total rebounds. Loose ball, Hoyas have it back. Underneath, Jahidi White cannot knock it down. And the rebound cleared off by Juan Gaston. Barberry has to get some urgency now into that Georgia Tech offense. I'll tell you, Tuomo really does a great job pressuring the basketball defensively. Georgetown. Maddox, offensive foul, he hooked him. And they got him with the hook. Have a happy, happy birthday. A couple of guys that are 80 years young. Wow. Plus or minus a couple. Thank you, sir. That was very nice. Uh, Iverson baseline. And it'll go back to the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech. You know, they're playing white together now with Othella Harrington. You talk about a lot of beef on the inside. They try to transition. 
Matt Harpering could not reach it. And this club at Georgetown, they're going to get better and better, too, once they get a little bit more experience in the backcourt. Remember, Page has only played two games. Iverson's only played one season. I mean, this is a young Georgetown backcourt. They can throw in Tuomo. He's only a freshman. That was the 18th turnover by Georgia Tech. Georgetown has scored six not scored tonight. Harrington has six points. He's on his way to a double-digit rebounding night. We said during our first game that we did, Brad Nestler and I, that they really had to find a way to get Aliesma and Maddox some scoring. Maddox looks like he has stepped up to provide some scoring, but Aliesma's got to make himself a little bit more active offensively. Clubs battling for that top spot. A lot of balance in the conference. Don't have really that heavyweight Mike Tyson knockout team, but really have a lot of clubs. And every night you're going to be like, wow, when you look at the scores. A little jumper from the left side with go for Page. And they keep playing with the Celtics. And that's the way he'll get some PT, some playing time. You better love to play D if you're going to play for John Thompson. Here's Barry wheeling through there, dumping it off to the wing. Gaston short. Harrington, long one. Iverson. Hello! Yes, sir. Nice outlet by Harrington. A good Wes Unsel style outlet where he had it over his head. Two hands. Great catch by Iverson. Now you like those DC area guys, don't you? Oh, they're athletic. Right underneath Marbury and a nice finish by Matt Harper. Marbury creates it for Harper. Harper takes it up and scores. Look at Tuomo. I'm really impressed with him. He's going to give them an excellent third guard coming off the bench. Only a freshman. Lots of good playing time in this NIT. Victor Page with the West Central style outlet. Two hands, and there's the great catch. And the great bounce off the floor. It's like a scolding ball. A tremendous bounce. You know, he didn't exactly flush that jam. He got a little iron with it. He got some iron. Here's Barry. Oh, nice. Marbury, that's his first basket in the second half. Nice look by Barry. tell you one thing he catches he's a blur he's quick quicker quicker i mean he's just so quick he did a blink he's gone i mean he is gone halfway through the second half it's a 15 point hole you lead very nice look and a good right side finish that is one gaston and he's got eight points in the reserve role tonight yeah gaston's a kid that's gonna be a positive force coming off the bench very productive for georgia tech Maddox is back up, about to check back in for Bobby Crimmins. Here's Jahidi White back in. Oh, how do you stop 6'9", 270? I'll tell you the big th Harper has it. Jahidi White fouls it. And you can see the pain all over his face. He reminds me right now of the pain that he's playing. Very similar to last year, we had a game with Neil Reed, the outstanding young guard for Indiana, who was playing with a shoulder injury. You can just see it on his face. And today you can see it on Barry's face. I want to say happy Thanksgiving before we get any further to all the beautiful people at our studio and the people across America. Well, I enjoy that turkey. Have a great, great holiday. Allen goes to the sideline. Yeah, and then join us Friday for the tip-off classic and the NIT championship game. Some holiday football coming your way tomorrow night with Baylor and Texas. Determine those bowl bids now. It's getting really a tough time of the year. We just have to separate people. Here's Paige. Barry checking in. A 360, but he travels. You know, I think Dan Bonner in the 73 58 Georgetown. Look at Tuomo. He's really very active defensively. He said, Hey, I didn't get a lot of publicity and notoriety in high school, and I'm playing against Mr. Marbury. He said, He was a superstar. I'm going to show him that I can play too. That's too Beautiful wife, Carol. She can play as well. See, now you strike me as a baseliner, but he's one of those serving volley guys. You got a good idea. He done so much serving down those. You talk about Woolridge and certainly Kingsbury, who can shoot the basketball. Dr. Tom should have a big, big year this year. All of his seniors back. Georgia Tech's getting a solid player next year as well. And a kid by the name of Baby.
Campbell, I mentioned his brother, by the way, is going over to Massachusetts, Mike, and John will be going over to, to Georgia, Georgia Tech, along with Pablo Machado. They love him from out of Venezuela, a 6'9 kid playing at Tiff High School in Georgia. Pablo Machado. Well, I guess Venezuela doesn't just produce shortstops anymore. 13 points, the Hoyas lead. 8-15, pairings and weights, scores, and a foul. Great high-low play. What a great high-low entry right there by Jerome Williams. Little 4-5 interchange of two big players. We're going to take a look at it right here. We're going to watch them as we see right here. They're going to get some high-low play in this area here. Right in that area. Now we're going to watch them. There's the high-low. Now here comes Jerome Williams, and there's the dump down. And there's the catch by Harrington and the conversion. And it's illustrated went bad on me. Give it a turnover. You've been waiting all night I to know. do some graffiti here in New York. Give it a turnover. By the way, he did make the free throw. Here goes Iverson. Oh, it's a trip. Oh, it almost went. There is no pair of players in the country who can guard these guys on the break. I mean, they're so incredible on a break. But they got to build a new arena. The John Thompson Arena on campus. Pack it every night. Get away from a pro arena. I mean, they got to have our own college complex. If Dean has his, John has earned his. Hey, you can't tell me with all the cash and all their alumni. Put the money together. Build a beautiful arena. Hold about 12000 Sell it out every night. Have it right in the campus area. Have those Hoya kids going bananas. Have you checked real estate prices in Georgetown lately? Well, I'll donate a few dollars. I'll start it off. <laughs> you better start with a few million. A few million. Victor Page looking for his 20th point. Ah, yeah. Victor Page is going to have many a 20-point night. John started off at Providence College when someone gave him an opportunity to become a all-American with the Friars. And you know the one thing he's so proud of? Because of someone giving him an opportunity. His one son graduated Princeton, another son graduated Georgetown, and his daughter graduated Brown. Time out on the Friday night uh, at the Martin Luther King Banquet, the Black Coaches Association. It'll be a tremendous night. All the coaches will be there, Rick Majerus and Roy Williams. And I'm flattered and honored to receive one of their awards. Not that I deserve it. There's so many guys in our business who do so much for young people. Well done, sir. And uh, the governor will be here, Bill Raftery. We'll check his tan lines when he gets back from Maui. Oh, I've been on a golf course. He and John Saunders get that every year. <laughs> Jerome Williams handling it for the Hoyas. Shot clock That's at bad. three. Harrington. And he was stopped straight up by Michael Maddox. Well, fellas loaded to put on the floor. Davis and Blair certainly can match up on the interior with Harrington and Williams. Barry out of the wing. For Marbury. Threw it into traffic. Here come the Hoyas. They've got numbers. They had Iverson, but his pass was deflected, and Page will now pull it out for their half-court offense. At least what we know of it, we don't see it very often. You know, another matchup will be interesting in that game is Reggie Geary defensively against Allen Iverson. I mean, yeah. you're talking about a great defensive stopper. Two of them. Williams. How about the big fellas handling the ball there? Excellent awareness. We're We'll check in with them way out west against Carolina. That's coming up right after we're done here. With Saunders and Raftery out at the Lahaina Civic Center on the island of Maui. Ten points for Jerome Williams tonight. Just a solid player. I mean, you got a guy like Williams who's your fourth option. If you classify certainly Iverson, Page, and Harrington as your one, two, three options, you got a heck of a basketball team. Because Jerome Williams is a solid player. Bubakar Al with the rebound there. Page way out there. They are really hitting the glass. Georgetown flat out beating their backside on the glass. I mean, they are absolutely owning the glass, just dominating on the interior, showing that strength on the inside. Harrington, I mean, that's a pretty tough number to overcome if you're Georgia, Georgia Tech. Leesma certainly had a great presence in the first two games defensively blocking shots, but tonight he's really not been a factor at all on the inside. 
He had seven blocks and tied a check record against Manhattan. Then he had a double-double against Oklahoma with 12 points and 11 boards, but tonight, virtually nothing. And he's really one of the favorites down here. All the people love him, chant Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. There's no chant of Eddie, Eddie here tonight. The man out of LaSalle had a rude homecoming tonight. Iverson handling it, getting tripped. And Iverson's won the matchup head-to-head -head with Marbury, even though Marbury's made some, really has shown some flashes of brilliance, but in total of the total game, you'd have to give the edge to Iverson. See, right now, Eric, when you talk about, you talk about Marbury, they gotta forget all the talk about playing at the next level and let him just concentrate on being a collegiate. Let him concentrate on being a student and an athlete and enjoy his moment on the Ramblin' Rec campus because really there are a lot of parts of his game he still has to work on. That's 23 for Allen Iverson. And a 23 point lead for the Hoyas as we wind it down to six minutes remaining. Barry looking to create a shot. He did. Looks like that ankle got a little better here in the second half. 11 points since halftime. He's favoring it a little bit, but not like he did in the first half. Gutty performance. Got to give the kid an A-plus for having the guts and heart to stay on that court. Iverson and Marbury staring each other down here. Iverson played in high school with Tony Rutland, who plays a little left hand. Oh! Got 12 of his 14 in the second half. Oh, what a pass. Hello. Warm up the boss, Bobby C. Get him to the hotel. This baby's academic. Boyas by 25. The round is on. Get out the turkey. Uh, Saunders the miss. Maddox the follow. He has 18 tonight, but only four since halftime. See how we take off Barry now. He's still limping. There's no need to play him at this moment. Get they do some. have another guard they use, Brian Brennan, a sophomore out of Archbishop Carroll in Philadelphia. I'd give somebody else a little experience. Don't want to take a chance of an injury that could really hurt him for the entire year because they're not a deep basketball team. Hey, Dickie, one shot. Usually you use that shot when you play horse. You know, you play <laughs> horse, you find a guy that can't use it, H-O-R. I mean, he thinks he's Kareem. He thinks he's Mr. Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah, but did, did Kareem shoot it from out that far? I'll tell you, Kareem had a magical hook shot, and Kareem was the greatest offensive and defensive. If you talk the total post, he deserves a stand and all. He sits down with 23 points tonight. He took a pounding in that first game against Colgate. He adds six assists and five steals. He and Victor Page are going to make a lot of beautiful music together. 22 for Victor, so they've got 45 between them. They're going to have hits galore. They're going to be like Hootie and the Blowfish with all kinds of hits. <laughs> Here's Barry. Heartbreak, trying to get the offensive rebound. It'll go back to the Hoyas. Heartbreak's had a tough night tonight. He's certainly hustled and scrapped. There's a look at Allen Iverson on that sideline. Laurie Michael, the Georgetown trainer, having a look. Bubakar <laughs> Al. That's for Jerome Williams. Now he'll try it. And he'll commit an offensive foul in his fourth. Yeah, offensive foul. He stepped in on a baseline, ran into the defensive player. Jerome really out of high school committed verbally to American University, but then went to junior college. That way, when this one is over, Bob Carpenter and Dick Vitale of Madison Square Garden. And the Hoyas are on cruise control in the final four minutes. The Big East really has struggled here in the NIT preseason. If you look over the years, the last time a team won it was 1988. That was when Syracuse won this tournament. Barbary couldn't finish when he started. Iverson up with a loose ball. 89, St. John's lost in the finals. 90, Boston College, second round. Pittsburgh in 91, semis. Seton Hall in 92, lost in the finals. 93, St. John's, first round. And 94, Syracuse in the first round. Lost to George Washington last year at home. Played it at Manly. 
Page looking for penetration. Runs out of room. And then it was a turnover when he got the ball back before coming down. Now he's pleading, a little pleading with Teddy Valentine. He's trying to make like a lawyer. He wants to be a politician. He says, hey, I'm in Washington. I'm a politician. I'm learning. I'm hey, learning. Othella Harrington was an intern on Capitol Hill this past summer. He ought to talk to him. He worked for Congressman Bliley of Virginia. Did the big fella. You know, the appeals court overturned the conviction on Allen Iverson, and they gave him a clean slate we talked about earlier. There's Williams leaving it. Page. Oh, Williams gets it back, and Harpring ends up on his back. And Jim's in his seventh year with Luke. A lot of experience on that sideline when Olsen hooks up against Mr. Thompson. Well, something like 35, maybe close to 40 years combined. A little coaching know-how. Marbury, high off the glass, and Stephon has only his second field goal of the second half. 13 points on the night for the freshman out of Brooklyn. Excellent stutter step right there to get him free in an isolation on a one-on-one -on -one maneuver. Two and a half minutes to go. Just didn't have enough inside on that baseline to neutralize George, George down on the glass. Iverson running into traffic. Hartbring leads a three-on-one. Page the only man back. Nothing he could do. Nice assist from Marbury. Referee's timeout. Iverson shaking up. Bob Donato all the time. Iverson going to go to the soft explosiveness of clubs. And coaches get a little scared. They're afraid to go to their bench. They're afraid to substitute. You know, Dick, now you've got the 22nd timeout that you can save till the end if you're coming from behind. That can help as well. Here's Page. He said, don't worry about anything, Alan. Don't worry about anything. I'm going to just take over a little dribble penetration. I'll get into the lane. I'll take the high percentage shot. So you sit down and you rest, Alan. You've been ready for Friday night. Page and Iverson have combined for 47 points tonight. That was heartbreaking. 16 for him tonight with that three. Othella Harrington for this. He got it back. He's got some nice numbers rebounding tonight, Othella. 13 of them. A minute 10 remaining before Georgetown starts thinking about Arizona. Harpering with the foul. It'll be his second. Icing that left thumb of Allen Iverson. Look at his left leg. Look at his shake. Look at the left leg. You can see he's in quite a bit of pain right there. Look at the left leg. He had 23, six assists, five steals, eight turnovers tonight. Cole Williams comes over to check and see what his teammates are feeling. His buddy at guard, John Thompson's freshman, Victor Page, to the line. Those are the kind of sights you really don't like to see in college athletics. Georgia Tech starts moving some people into the game. That's Bright. Kenny Anderson fame. Yeah, that rings a bell for folks in Atlanta. That's 25 for Victor Page. Kenny Anderson was a much better scorer than Stephon Marbury. Marbury on a collegiate level might be a little better in comparing him with Kenny when Kenny was a Collegiate freshman thunders to the line. Bucky Hodge has checked in for Georgia Tech, a sophomore out of Florida. Hey, don't don't get me wrong, Kenny Anderson was phenomenal. I mean, I don't want people to think I didn't think he was phenomenal. He played with a little better cast, though, too. When they went to the Final Four in 90, he was surrounded with guys like Malcolm Mackey, Dennis Scott, also Brian Oliver. All those guys got at least a cup of coffee in the NBA. Dennis Scott now doing a great job with the Magic. Who would winner without Shaq take it to the rack? Shaquille. Penny Hardaway. Wow. Final 50 seconds. There's two Omu. Who got one from downtown? And he out hustles him for the basketball. Yeah, that was Ryan Murphy after it. with the steal was Gary Saunders. 
By the way, John Saunders and Bill Rapp. Have. You got to root for them to get a deuce. Get in the scoreboard. Get, get in there. Get in there. Oh, it's got to go down, Bobby. Brian Brennan couldn't knock it down. Jackson, right side. 2 0 move is underneath. Final 10 seconds. Oh, look at Jahani. Jahani. Look at Jahani. He says, hey, look at me. I'm from St. Louis. Look at my power. Look at my strength. for Georgetown, Dick. They were up by eight at the half and win it by 22. They just dominated in every phase. On the glass, great speed by Allen Iverson. Page is scoring. He said the Hoya is coming up in 48 hours. All right, guys, have a good Thanksgiving and, of course, the concern of I2 over the Yellow Jackets.